Um, so uh, last lectures, we finish at this uh, practice of the implementations of forward and backward Euler, okay, and show you that the uh, uh, there is stability issues and accuracy issues. Okay, they are rather independent. Okay, so that the uh, uh, hopefully that this is part of you a very simple. Um, principle that you can learn for now. This is what we'll come back to this point when we solve the ODE, okay? And we'll use the, the thing we learned in local approximations for uh, how we be able to solve ODEs, like uh, either for the um, mechanical arms or uh, circuit simulations, okay? How that can be done correctly, okay? And very uh, verifiable. So today, um, uh, the goal is to uh, further down this uh, HB adaptivity, okay? Uh, H uh, stands for you do, when you do local analysis, you use a smaller H. P adaptivity means that you use higher order uh, approximations, okay, to approach your local analysis, okay? We are further uh, going down for that path, okay? Go for that path. So the, uh, um, the idea of Richardson extrapolation can be used as in this example. It can be more general than this, but this is a good example to show you the Richardson extrapolation concept. Okay. We have a general way of doing the second order approximation if we know three points. Right? Two points, we can always do first order. Three points, uh, arbitrary H1 and H2, Okay, we know that we can cancel the second order term and make it a second order approximation. A specific choice is shown here, is the uh, H2 equal to 2H1 equal to 2H, okay? And you get three copies of the evaluations of your derivative, okay? You use H, this is one approximation of order, uh, uh, of order H, okay? So your uh, meaning that you have a uh, error term that's depending on the h times the uh, second derivative and the remaining is second order. Okay, so you mean second order. And you get a copy of this, okay, right here. And you get a copy using the three points, okay, and this is the second order, okay. And last time we mentioned that you compare um, one and two, you get a idea about is your age good? Okay, is your age small enough or large enough, um, uh, not causing the round, uh, round of error? Okay, compare these, these two, you get an idea about edge adaptivity. Compare one and three, that's give you an idea about P adaptivity. Okay, so, so we walk through this. Okay, uh, this is a important idea how Without knowing the ground truths, by comparing different ways of doing approximations, we can know something about how good is our approximation, okay? So we use this uh, very simple uh, uh, ex uh, example to show you, okay? Uh, last night for the uh, Super Bowl, uh, supposedly there should be uh, the coordinations of the quadcopters to show you the glorious uh, robotic control, but somehow it didn't show. Okay, I don't know why, okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't know what happened. Oh, uh, but it's supposedly all the attention has been saying that they have two, more than 200 quadcopters and be able to do all this formation in the air automatically. I see a, a few, but certainly not the focus of the show. I was waiting for that. What? That they have some, right? Like the stars? Yeah, I saw Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> But just Pepsi, though, I mean, if, it, if it's a static uh, configuration, it's too simple. I mean, you can do this uh, at our campus. It's not a Super Bowl event, right? It has to do something like a, like a flying dragon or something, right? 200 things coordinated, or you use a quadcopter to reproduce a, uh, a, a pat, complete pass or something. Dynamic, right? If it's just a static formation, you can do it here. Seriously, okay, but no, but that is a control, okay? That is a, a control problem that you write, okay? 
Uh, for sure, the problem is a little bit more complicated because you have to collect it. Say you have 200 quadcopters, you need to collect 200 right, positions and then do the uh, approximations and things. So your F can be rather complicated, right, even much more complicated than the example here. And making verifiability even more important. Okay, when the, when the F is very complicated, okay, that means the verifiability is even uh, more important. So last night, for sure, uh, after knowing that the uh, Maria Carey in the uh, New Year Eve have that technical shutdown, right? I was really commended that Lady Gaga is there to jump. Something, <laughs> something wrong, <laughs> Some, something technical wrong, that would be, that would be really bad. Anyway, so in, in that way, okay, technology doesn't need to be correct, okay? There are always possibility of problems, okay? So making a verifi verifiability to be very important, okay? Okay, so, okay, let me come to this point, okay? So you, are, you should be always asking yourself, saying that, uh, how do we verify it, okay? And how, what is good enough for your verification scheme? Okay, this should be number one in your considerations. Okay, I will dwell on this so that you are I'm com you are completely sold on this idea. Okay, okay. Um, so the ground truth is unknown, right? And sampling uh, is expensive or limited. Okay, your your hands are still tied. Okay, it's not you can verify anything you want. You when you do verification, you also have to think about the cost of verification. Okay, you have to verify it, but you also have to think about the cost of verification. What is the minimal cost of to do your verification? Okay, so these are the two things that should be built in when you write a software program. Okay, how do I verify my program? Okay, this is the first thing in doing the uh, before you put down a single line of code. How can these this line of code be verified? Second. I have a limited resources to do this verification. Okay, it's not infinite. Okay, so uh, the Richardson extrapolation coefficient is defined in such way. Here, I show you the uh, um, edge adaptivity. Okay, so I know for arbitrary functions. Okay, if I compare these two, right? These two. The ratio of this, of this error, if I know the ground truth, right, then this eta is something that for first order should be two, right? Remember, this is, this tell you something, right? Tell you two things, right? Your error is this. This is your error, right? This is your error, okay? First, this is the same in the evaluation of 2H and H, right? So this tell you that whether your error is this, okay? Second, how important is relatively this one to this, right? So if you get a uh, ground truth and you've been able to um, Compute this ratio, okay? For sure, this formula, I use error, right? By the approximation, meaning I know the ground truth, okay? And if, but if I know the ground truth and I compute the eta, that's actually, uh, here is two, because my, my approximation is the first order approximation, okay? Then I know that this is not important, sufficiently smaller than this, and my implementation is correct, right? Because my error is proportional to h for arbitrary second derivative, right? So two things I know, right? If I here I get a two, okay? I do know, right? This is smaller than this, and my implementations of my local approximation is verified, okay? But this is usually not known, right? I cannot. I don't have the error. I don't know because I don't have the ground truth. Okay, so an alternative way is to evaluate in this, right? 
I do the approximation function, not the error function, okay? Here it's just that how the, uh, the, my evaluations of the first derivative, okay? I use the copy I get from 4h and 2h, the difference over 2h and h, okay? This should also be eta, right? This one does not, does not assume, I'm not using the error function, right? Error function means I know what is the ground truth. If I only know the, uh, the approximate, approximation value by different perturbations, but if I do this, this should also be eta, the same eta as before, right? Same eta, okay? Because you are, if you expand this, right? You expand this, 4h minus 2h should be 2h, right? 2h minus h should be proportional to h, right? So this one should also be, the eta should be also 2 to the power p. So if I get this, I also get the same conclusion. My first order local analysis implementation is correct. And the second order, my h is small enough that the second order term is smaller than this. If I get this estimation, okay? The caveat is, this one is expensive, okay? In the terms that I do use three points to make this evaluation, okay? A lot of the numerical analysis, which I'll introduce you late, later, is to minimize this cost, okay? Make your calculations of 4H not to be wasted, okay? So there are, uh, when I go for the, the examples, I'll show you how all my evaluations can be used and they still achieve a verification purposes, okay? This is already, this is, this is expensive because I evaluate more, okay? But can I use that additional information in my cat computation as well, okay? So I, this, the evaluation is not wasted, okay? This I'll show you when real problem come, okay? Um, and a good example is your circuit simulation, okay? Your circuit, circuit simulations, every point is used, every time point is used for your um, uh, circuit simulations, and they combine different points to uh, make the uh, uh, verification whether the approximation is correct, okay? Every point you need to be used, okay? Every point is used, and they, but they, you choose different sets, either using this H adaptivity alone or HP adaptivity together to evaluate how good is my approximation, okay? So these are the, uh, um, the other way of looking at it. And this, if you have this idea, okay, if you now, if you know how good by checking this uh, uh, Richardson constant, okay, if you know how good it is, then we should say that the, uh, um, our approximation is reasonable, and then I will ask the questions, okay, what is the largest H that can achieve a good approximation? I know smaller one, smaller H will work, right? because that smaller h, before round off errors hits, smaller h carry a smaller second order term. But smaller h is more expensive, right? Especially when it's your, your uh, realistic real world is doing nothing, okay? Maybe you are simulating a, uh, a circuit simulation and the step hasn't come, okay? If you choose a very small time step where your circuit is in steady state, you waste a lot of resource, right? You're computing for nothing, okay? And this is important because once we establish this, right, we should be able to tell what is the largest H that can give me a reasonable estimate. This can save your computational cost, okay? And many times the computational cost is heavily dependent on this eta, okay? So let me show you. Uh, a problem, okay, that's your saying that you are solving a thermal distribution problem, okay? And this is 3D, okay? This is a 3D geometry. You hope to know the temperature by solving a Laplace equation, okay? The easiest way to do it, you grid the space, right, uh, by H, okay, by H, um, and then you solve the temperature, solve the uh, uh, equation on this grid, okay? So this is a 2D grid, okay? Uh, as a show, but if you say this is, imagining this is three grid, uh, 3D, all the tetrahedra 
Okay, it's uh, composing the domain of interest, and you would like to solve the temperature distributions. So you can see if I do h to two a uh, h over two, you make the local approximation to be two times smaller. Okay, you will have eight times more grid point, three D, right? That's the uh, so you have two to the three number of grid point. And most of the nonlinear, okay, saying that you have a source that's uh, that's not make uh, make the Laplace equation nonlinear. Most of the time, if it's linear, okay, then you have in, on each uh, grid point you have eight times more variable, right? If it's a linear problem, then it is eight times more expensive. Okay, when it is a nonlinear problem, then it usually depends on the n square or n cube to solve a nonlinear problem, okay, by the number of variables. All of a sudden, you will be 64 times or even 500 times slower if you just choose to go for h to h divided by 2, right, on this very simple 3D problem, right. This can be the weather forecast, right. You have a, I want to simulate the 3D uh, grid of the Ithaca area. I have sensor point knowing that the wind speed and temperature at limited point. I need to solve how the air conduct all these things to predict, tell you tomorrow is going to rain or snow. If you choose a smaller H to be more accurate, this is the price, right? If you just want to be safe, I, I just want to be safe. So let me choose a very small H so that it's, it can be more accurate. Small H carry a very heavy cost. So verifiability have another domain of looking at it. It's not just to find what's the smallest h that my approximation is good, but also what is the largest h that's verifiable and have the smallest computational cost. Okay, so whenever we come to HP adaptivity, right, you want to choose just the right h, right? Just the right p, so that it is both verifiably accurate enough and have the minimal computational cost. And you want the computer to do this for you, not for you. I said it should be 10 meters or 5 meters or 2.5. You never know if it's good enough, right? So your whole scheme when you put on your program is that how do I estimate, okay? The age is small enough, it's verifiably correct approximation, but is it large enough so that the computational cost is acceptable, okay? You want to implement your program in such a way that it's smart enough to choose both what should be my local analysis discretizations and what should be the order of my uh, approximation, okay? If you write it blindly, it can be either totally wrong, which is disaster, or it never give you a result because your computer, the, the problem is too complex. That's equally bad, right? So generic implementation of software for most of the real world problem contains a lot of these thoughts, right? That you, you have to beforehand plan out how the computer should do this to give you the acceptable approximation and acceptable computational cost. Okay, let's. Uh, so this is your. Um, suppose it, this will be your homework. Okay, um, you implement as we said these three, and you tabulate. Okay, because this is from a known functions. I know the ground truths and can calculate the error. I can do without knowing the uh, uh, ground truths. I can do the. Uh, uh, approximation, okay? So I would like you to do the uh, uh, eight different H, okay? And tabulate it, okay? Tabulate it, and you can observe uh, how good is this concept of Richardson's uh, extrapolation, okay? So this take 15 minutes to do. Um, I don't know if you have done it, okay? So today I'm going to skip this hacker practice, okay? So you're not going to, this is, takes a little bit longer than, than, um, than usually uh, in class five minutes exercise. Okay, so but it is your homework too, so please finish this, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, is the E and the A basically just F prime or? 
Yes, yes. E, no, E is F prime minus your approximation minus what is known as 2x, a uh, 3x square. I know the ground truth, right? Because I know fx is this, right? And I know the ground truth, right? So E is your approximation minus the ground truth, okay? A is just your approximation, okay? So that's the, that's the difference, yes? Oh, same question. Okay, yeah. E is usually you don't know E, okay? Because it requires your approximation minus the ground truth. Okay. But you don't know the most of the time you don't. Here we I I know the ground truth. So I can I can show you that Richardson constant works for both. Okay. But usually this is unknown. Okay. Uh, if you know the error, the, if you know the ground truth in the first place, why do you write the local analysis, right? Just, just do the whole thing symbolically, right? A is just what you get. A is just a, yes, just approximation. So A here is just this, right? What you approximate with the, with the three different things. That's A, okay? E is this minus the ground truth that you know. Okay, what I really want to do is that in your head, this has been done, okay? And you believe that, oh, yeah, yeah, if I do it correctly, okay, the eta will be two, okay? Uh, it will be gradually become closer and closer to two when you choose the correct age, okay? Say that, suppose that this is done, okay? This is a question I want to ask you, okay? Say you have done, okay? You have a correct estimate, and it's a, it's a, it's a well-behaved two after you're hitting some H before the round off comes up, okay? Okay? Is it possible that after you have a correct eta, say that it's two, okay? You choose the age, and the behavior is uh, going to two after some age, and then round off error kicks in, and then stopping to anymore, uh, not close to anymore, okay? You know, you know the answer. If your coding has an error, okay, in your local analysis, instead of uh, divided by h, you times h. So this uh, happened in my office hour. Somebody come on, you have this error, okay, Un unintentional, okay. Will the verifications of eta be able able to tell you that you have a wrong implementations of your approximation? Well, this equation ever give you that correct eta behavior? I want a yes, no answer, right? In that case, it'll work. It'll still give the correct eta value, right? Because the h, if it's on the bottom or the top, it'll just cancel out, wouldn't it? For, the, for this approximation, though, yeah. this one. Will it still work? If it's just h not in a function, shouldn't it still? Uh, Think about it, okay? If I have this error, okay, what it, would be correct? Will my eta still have that two behavior when I when h becomes smaller and smaller? It's actually puzzling, huh? Okay, good. Okay, so welcome to try. Okay, and the answer is no, because this is not a first order approximation. You, if, if you commit this wrong, okay, you won't see it. You won't see that h getting smaller, okay, eta closer to two, okay, and when h getting even smaller, you round off error, catch up, okay. So this, originally, you, you may be seeing that your eta from this one, okay, knowing that you don't know the ground truth using this one, your eta will be something like maybe starting with four, three point something, okay. After some age, okay, it become two, very close to two for a while, and then screw up again, okay. So this behavior, okay. This behavior won't happen if you do this, okay. If the approximation is this. I saw it, okay. Um, um, some wrong implementation. 
that this won't happen. Okay. Because your approximation is no longer in this first order accurate. Right? In this in this instance, right? Your function no longer is be uh, this slope, right? Now you depend on h instead of 1 over h. So that will not give you this behavior. Okay? Okay, first, okay. If you likely that you have a wrong implementation, okay? Saying that your x is very, very complicated, okay? And you are somehow the x in this uh, scheme, in your discretization scheme, like this, some of this is implemented, implemented wrong, saying that this 3 is not 3. Uh, somehow you, uh, you code it, this become 4. Okay? For sure, this have it. there are other types of error, but just that your, your local analysis is implemented wrong. <coughs> Will you be able to find it by checking the Richardson constant? And the answer is, if the implementation is wrong, it should loss right, the behavior that it is h times second derivative plus this. Only in these conditions that Richardson constant will have this behavior. If you have some implementation wrong, likely you will be able to find it. That will find that, oh, my implementing have a problem because my Richardson exploration constant is never approaching to the value I expected over a range of h. Okay. Third question, okay? If your fx implementation is wrong, will Richardson constant tell you that this is wrong? It won't, right? Because for all kind of f, as long as it's a well-behaved function, then this behavior should exist, right? If when the Taylor expansion is correct and your error is can be written down by this, right? Whatever that f is, even your wrong implementation of, of f, it will still give you this behavior. So this check does not check your fx implementations, but this check this particular check, check whether you have done the discretizations or local analysis correctly. Right? Because the implementation of f, fx, is not checked. Right? You, you calculate the Richardson constant, right? It didn't check the correctness of f, fx at all. It's not tested. So the next question, more important, is here, right? So how should you plan your modular programming and your test, right, so that all parts are checked? For this good example, right, if you do the Richardson constant test, for sure, if doing the uh, a very complicated uh, computation, this is expensive. So you don't do this always. But when you write down an approximation, you should write a separate test just to see whether your first order or second order local analysis is correct okay with an arbitrary fx and you have probably a known fx to test your um, lo uh, local analysis for Richardson extrapolation you have a test function that you know the behavior and this is how you should write that how your uh, 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 discretization should be you should have a separate <coughs> test for f, right? So your modular programming is not just, oh, I want to make my code more readable. That's, that's one, one way to look at it, very important, okay? Your modular programming should make your code readable, should make the team written software easier, for sure, okay? But modular programming also have another purpose. Each module have its test and you know what that test cover, right? In here, you can see Richardson constant is a good example that you can check, where you can verify whether your local analysis code is correct. It didn't check fx. 
you need to find another test to check FX. Because even you have claimed, to, oh, I have tested, it works. But now the answer is still wrong. Right? You need to find out, that, okay, what hasn't been tested? Okay? In here, FX hasn't been tested. So your FX, how to test it? Okay, you probably want to do the asymptotic value. You want to uh, have all the known knowledge for the known case of F, and you test that because your this test is not doesn't cover the FX implementation at all. When you write down your modular programming, right? This consideration is totally critical. Okay, I have an object, and this object has this task suite. Okay, and this task suite cover this part of the implementation, and they become self-contained. What is not tested should be clear to you. Okay. In addition to that, your code needs to be readable. Your code needs to be, uh, you know, for different people separate to different parts of work. Right. This is actually to me is even more critical in the top design. Right. How do I write down the module so that each module can be independently tested and I know what has been tested? Okay. That's, to me, more important than readability and, uh, you know, and source code control. You know how, how much your code has been verified through your design of the modular programming. You separate code in the purpose so that each module can be tested by themselves. That each module have a way to test the validity and correctness. Okay, it's 101 in modular programming. And this should show you a good example, right? You can test Richardson constant, but you should also know that Richardson constant has nothing to do with implementation of FX, right? Okay, any questions? So very simple. Um, Example of a local analysis, you know that the uh, um, how to estimate a derivative probably from your first um, class of calculus. Okay, so now when you turn into software, okay, turn into software, this example gives you the idea of HP adaptivity, okay, and a hint in any implementations how you should do your modular programming. Okay, what has been covered in your test? Okay. Any questions? Okay. So, we're going for the next topic. If you don't have questions. I'm sorry, the lecture six, uh, I posted, but it's not a completed uh, um, lecture. Or originally, I was hoping only watch for two hours football, but I finished the game. I just, I cannot, I cannot walk away, I apologize, okay. I want to say, I haven't finished my lecture, but I just cannot walk away. It's just amazing, one of the, Two years ago, the uh, the Super Bowl is already very very good. This this yesterday is even better. Yeah. Anyway, so so now okay. So, so sorry, but the, this is not for this lecture. Okay, so this is not complete yet. Okay, um, um, I will sh make sure you, you complete at um, before Wednesday. Okay, so the second part is integration. Okay, calculus. What's the calculus? Calculus is differentiation and integration. Okay, for sure, calculus is going to lead you to your ODE, ordinary differential equation, partial differential equations, your your geom differential geometry, and all the things. Okay, so but you know, in the progression of that, uh, we use uh, uh, integration, local analysis of integration, to give you concept, and then we are going to uh, more uh, practical examples of how do you deal with nonlinear solvers, optimization, geometry. Uh, differential equation and so on, okay? But these are like the um, um, basic principle behind uh, how you look at the real world, okay? For sure, uh, calculus is invented but when Isaac Newton and Leibniz, right, looking at the real world and saying that I want a tool to describe the real world, okay? 
and calculus is invented for that very purpose, okay? So now software for sure, uh, knowing that the, the world is described by calculus, I'm thinking about how do I use my software to represent the real world, so this is where it all comes, okay? So, okay, um, just a, for, a forecast, okay? It will be as many about equations, okay, the e equation is going to be a little bit more horrible for integration. Let me show you the equation. It will be something like this, okay. Uh, but before you being afraid by those equations, okay, it is actually so similar to differentiation. Okay, so just as a pre-word, so when a big equation comes to you, don't be afraid because it's the same Taylor series. Okay, I just want to make the uh, the approximation better by my Taylor series, okay? It's just as a pre-word, so you don't have to, when the big equation comes, don't, don't feel, oh, this is something I cannot understand, okay? Entirely similar to differentiation, okay? Nothing more, nothing less, okay? The name actually is a little bit funny, okay? Because integration, uh, uh, many times in the uh, lit, uh, books and literature, it's call, also called interpolations, right? I know the integrations of a function, Okay, and then uh, I know the mean value, right? Mean value of that, of that uh, section, okay? So this integration is equal to mean value of uh, B minus A. I just saw that, that's stupid, sorry. B minus A, okay, not A minus B. Okay, so this is called interpolation or finding the mean value. Uh, it's also called historically quadrature, okay? This is a quadrature problem, okay? So this, in the, in the ancient times, that when, um, when the people need to know the geometrical average okay, of two numbers, uh, this is how they find it. Okay? A and B, they use a, a, a campus to draw the circle, and this okay, will be the geometrical average. Okay? Very simply proved. And this is called a quadrature scheme, okay, quadrature scheme. Um, of these things, and this inherited to uh, become quadrature, become this is related to how you estimate the area of that square, right? Because B H square is this square, A and B is that rectangle, okay? You can see the importance of when they, people want to try to divide land, right? Constrained by the boundary conditions, the geometrical means in order to be fair, okay? It's very important, okay? So this has been invented by the Egyptian side uh, probably like 5,000 years ago, okay, uh, how to find the geometrical means uh, in this way, okay? But it's the name inherited to integration, okay? A integration to find the means. Integration to find the mean value, okay? The average value, okay? The, for here, it's a geometrical mean, okay? So the name of quadrature becomes almost synonym to that I use a numerical method to find a integration, okay, it's called quadrature, okay, quadrature scheme means, okay, uh, inherited from this, means I use a numerical method to evaluate a definite integral, okay, not indefinite integral, okay, a definite integral, okay, if I use a numerical scheme to uh, evaluate it, I call it a quadrature scheme, okay. So quadrature, you should really, you, this name should really suggest it's 90 degree phase shift, okay? You probably are looking for the 90 degrees phase shift as much as I do when I know the word quadrature, okay? But no, it's not here, okay? It's just that you inherit the name for the quadrature scheme, finding the geometrical average, and somehow become um, the finding the value of the definite integral, okay? It's called quadrature scheme, okay? And quadrature scheme in finite element method, which was spent about uh, two weeks on this, okay? Quadrature scheme, meaning that within that element, how do you make the approximation? Okay, for finite element, this has a spe specific meaning. The quadrature scheme for finite element is how good is your scheme approximate within that element? Okay, so that's all there is, okay? So just. So the problem is this, okay? The problem of you are, you, are, you, are, you want to evaluate this integral, okay? Integral of fx between a and b, that's for sure you know that is finding the air area s, okay? I'm going to make a discretization just like I'm discretizing the di differentiation, okay? I, I use the h to perturb it and see how what is the slope. 
Here, how do I evaluate it? I A and B, I chopped it to N segments, right? To N segments, and then and these N segments, in each small segment, I describe a small approximation function, okay? A known approximation function, right? F is usually unknown or very complicated, right? That uh, the, if I ask the question how to integrate this, my strategy is I discretize the space to n segment. Within each segment, I use a known function to approximate fx. Okay, known function I know how to integrate, right? So I use that known functions and and do these uh, summations, and I'm done. Right? This is how you probably do this integration. Okay, as you are uh, programming assignment somewhere to uh, one or two years ago. Okay, it's not uh, you want to do this discretize and then you uh, you know uh, use a known function to approximate this and the known function will be either a constant a linear functions a quadratic functions a, uh, a cubic functions or whatever function that you that you know that you know that's close to that fx okay remember this will be generalized to arbitrary dimension of x okay x is not if this this simple, that would be great, okay? Probably they have an uh, even easier way to do it. But what we do in all this analysis is that this is generalizable when f is really many variable in there, okay? Many variable in there, so that uh, you can, there's no easy way to do it, but you have to chop it, okay, in, in each dimension using an element to approximate it, and then you uh, uh, integrate over the entire space. Okay, so what we develop will be generalizable to multiple variable cases. Okay, so okay, the first thing I'll do, so this is something that I know, and you can probably already get a peek, that how, uh, how many h I need here, right, is the h adaptivity, the smaller the h, the more uh, uh, segment I need to have, the smaller the h, the approximation will be better. Right? If h is so small, then everything is linear, right? Every, or any functions, when you chop it to a very, very, very small region, it's, it's linear, right? Now linear terms are all gone. Okay, so, so you can, but chopping to very, very, very small, small segment, in this is suicide, right? You, can, you just cannot handle that many, um, that kind of, uh, um, that many elements. Okay, so, okay, so. So the goal is just the same as differentiation. How do you choose h? How do you choose approximation? How good is your approximation? And then ask the question, how do I do hb adaptivity and verify that it is correct? Same procedure. Very boring to go away once again for integration. Okay, but if you say, I just heard about this last week. Okay, that's correct, okay. <laughs> Nothing is different, but I applied it to the local analysis of integration. The principle is all the same. How to choose the h? How do you verify the h? How do you, within the h, how do you do uh, you know, uh, different orders? Different orders, how do you do p adaptivity? How do you estimate the error? And then when it's verified, then you know, that's the, I want the smallest h give me verifiable accuracy, largest h to save my computational cost. All the same, okay. Okay, but for theoretical analysis, we'll first do shift and normalize, okay? So each question is looked at as, uh, as a simple way, okay? Uh, this actually is important in the old days um, when, you, when the computer is a person who compute, okay? Your computer now is a machine, but computer for sure in the turn of the 20th century is a person who compute. Okay, so if you shift and normalize to minimize his work, it's a very, very important thing, okay? So, so this is, many of this is developed uh, back in the uh, uh, end of 18th century, okay, 18th century. Uh, so this is, uh, we sh have a formulation that we first shift and normalize each segment to this domain, okay? So the computation after the shift, right, all the computation is, it become the same, then the, you are computer, right, the person who compute, can make a gigantic table, so the next uh, computation you just look up tables, okay? So if you do the shift and normalizations, it's very good for that, okay? It's less 
important for efficiency these days by your machine computers, but this is also critical, okay, you will see very soon, that there's one way to control round of errors. Right? You normalize everything to around one. You get your maximum precision. Right? Because you can represent 10 to the 308 and 10 to the minus 308. Right? If your numbers start from 10 to the 100, then you know you it's not uh, you, when you get you, you get all the smaller numbers, but it's so easy to overflow. Right? So normalize is not a bad thing even for round of errors. Okay? So you normalize everything to one, right? So it has the most the value to go around. Okay? So this is good, okay? Maybe just one more slide, okay? So these are the possible method of this quadrature scheme. Okay, quadrature scheme. Let me tell you the one that you already know, okay? Rectangle, okay? So if I have a a, a function like this, was it rectangular? It's nothing but right, this is my function, this is my a. I'm doing this value and construct a square. Using this value, construct the square. Using this value, construct the square. This value, construct the square. Right. So this is rectangular, right? I use the beginning point, beginning point. This is your xk, right? So this is f xk. This is hk, right? Rectangular, okay? Straightforward, okay? You immediately notice this is not fair, right? This is going to underestimate, right? You immediately notice if it's for an increasing function, you will underestimate. For decreasing functions, you will be uh, overestimate. So this is already bad in the, f in the first, so I let me do something better. I use the average of this point, this point, and this point, right? Calculate the trapezoid, right? And this is, and I, I, there's no additional cost anyway, right? Because even though in this evaluation, it seems that I do two sampling points, but this point is shared with the next one. So I didn't, I didn't spend any extra effort, and I can get a better approximation. So this one is just free. Right? You use rectangular, not very smart, right? you, you save nothing. But at least the trapezoid is, in integration is smart, okay? But, okay, it's smart, but not so smart, okay? Uh, the, the great mathematician Gaussian figure out if you give me two points, I can do much better. Okay, how does he do it? Okay, well, figure out in the next lecture, okay? But this, these two you can understand, right? This is very simple, okay? Okay, and here for today.